uh, Drupal Commerce performance specifically. Um, first of all, who am I? Because uh, I'm not like super well known in the community. Um, I have been doing Drupal for about nine years. Uh, I've been working on commerce stuff since way back in the Ubercart days. Um, so since Ubercart Alpha, right after it was announced at uh, DrupalCon Boston. Um, so I do have a lot of experience working with it. Um, I work for Acromedia. Um, we are based in Canada, but we are distributed um, all over the world. We have about 60 staff, um, about 40 of which are developers, and we work exclusively on Drupal Commerce. Um, so not only do we just do Drupal, but we actually only do Drupal Commerce. Um, so we're pretty specific to this niche. So hopefully I can help out with a, um, a lot of details around commerce. Okay, um, into the topic. Why is commerce slow? Because <laughs> you're probably here because commerce is slow, not because it's so awesome and we're just all going to talk about how fast it is. Um, although if you are, that would be great. Um, uh, the biggest problem is um, Drupal relies a lot on anonymous caching um, and anonymous users to be fast. Uh, that's the primary, um, especially with Drupal 7, that is the primary way to get speed, um, is to have uh, page caching, um, to even use varnish in front of things, um, stuff like that. Um, that is rarely the case for Drupal Commerce that that can be useful. Um, because most of the time you're actually doing stuff, you're, you're loading dynamic pages, um, you're doing stuff with your users uh, that means you can't cache that. Also, the way uh, Drupal 7 works by default is that once you have a session, um, you are not cached anymore. Um, like you might use form caches, things like that, but the page cache is no longer um, being utilized. So that doesn't mean you actually have to be a logged in user to basically count as authenticated once you have a session. And so in e-commerce, that, what that means is once you add anything to your cart. Um, so once you add to your cart, suddenly everything is not page cached anymore. And so you're gonna go from, you know, maybe you have 100 millisecond page loads to you have, you know, or like uh, response times to 500 millisecond response times um, just by someone adds a single thing to their cart. And that has nothing to do with the cart itself being slow. Um, that just has to do that we drop uh, page caching completely. Um, so we're gonna talk about various ways to get around that, um, various things to do without having caching and stuff. Um, but it's all gonna hopefully be pretty commerce specific. Although it can be useful for um, other sites that do commerce uh, like things where they're very dynamic, they don't have um, much use of traditional Drupal caching. Um, this talk is actually also gonna be mostly on commerce 1.x for Drupal 7, although we will touch a little bit on commerce 2.x for Drupal 8 uh, at the end, hopefully if I go fast enough. Um, First thing, uh, to just get this out of the way, is use PHP 7 um, if you do Drupal Commerce. Um, it does work uh, perfectly fine with Commerce. Um, there is one very small patch that you have to apply. It is in the dev uh, branch of Commerce already. Um, it is not in a live release. Um, and if you see Ryan Sarama, just yell at him about that. Um, that is the only holdup is we need a release tagged um, to get that. And I'm now conducting like a small guerrilla campaign to get him to do that. So. Um, I harass him at every opportunity. Um, but uh, as you can see um, from the chart there, which hopefully you guys can kind of read, um, the first two bars there are just for standard Drupal, um, and the next two are for basically a uh, really standard, you know, like product page um, from Drupal Commerce. Uh, that just comes from a Commerce Kickstart example. Um, and uh, you'll gain about two and a half times performance. Um, so out of all the stuff we're gonna go over here, that's um, probably the best performance increase you're gonna get, um, and it's also the easiest. Uh, we run most of our commerce sites now on PHP 7, um, and there's very little problem with that. Um, uh, like I said, there's one small commerce core patch, um, and then otherwise most contrib is actually already patched and works perfectly fine. Um, and yeah, the performance is, is uh, both in speed and in memory, you'll get about the same benefits. So you'll get about two and a half times the performance and you will save, um, uh, you'll probably get about half your memory um, at the same time. So um, good for performance and good for scalability as well. Um, oh, and uh, I'll have a bunch of graphs and statistics and stuff here. Um, if anyone wants, um, you can uh, just you know grab me uh, after the talk or something. Um, or message me on Twitter, and I can provide like uh, all the data I used to get all that stuff because I ran a whole bunch of testing and benchmarks and stuff for this, and I have I have more than just what I'll be showing in these slides. So, um, uh, next thing we're going to go through a few uh, different modules and sort of different uh, performance options um, and so how they relate to Drupal Commerce um, because you can get pretty mixed results depending on what you're using. Um, the first thing is Entity Cache. Um, now specifically, there is a Commerce Entity Cache module. Uh, that handles uh, putting products, orders, um, 
uh, commerce stuff basically into NAD Cash as well. Um, this is, to be honest, going to be of limited uh, use. And uh, you'll get some advantage um, where you aren't able to use page caching um, and you are able to load entities, um, but that's only if you have a it will help you on like a product page where you're maybe only loading a single product. Um, it will actually be a fairly significant detriment to you um, if you are on a large page, like a big catalog page or something that's gonna load 30 to 40 products. Um, it'll probably give you a, a 30, 40% performance decrease. Um, so overall, uh, that one you can use in, in specific cases if it works for you. Um, I would test it uh, quite extensively and I would overall probably not recommend it. Um, just because it's going to probably give you more performance decreases um, than it is uh, for increases. Um, and it, uh, it doesn't work by def uh, it has support for orders by default, um, uh, but they tend to sort of break uh, data um, uh, consistency with orders because they will cache them uh, sort of too long and they, they don't uh, handle any sort of order locking um, setup. So you can get uh, overwrite issues and stuff. Sorry, I'm just going to keep an eye on the time here. Um, auth cache. Um, so this is actually going to help you a lot more, um, although it is a little tricky to set up. So basically, uh, for anyone who doesn't know what auth cache does, uh, is it gives you caching um, when you're an authenticated user. And so that applies to if you have a session, if you're actually logged in, um, any of that stuff that you don't normally get caching for. Um, so this uh, can actually be really, really great for Drupal Commerce because you will, like the problem I talked about before, um, where if you have uh, you know, pages that you just, the users added something to the cart or you show a simple, um, you know, view cart button up at the top that says you have two items in your cart. Well, that's technically dynamic. Um, and so that's going to screw up your whole page um, as well. And so if you set up auth cache, you can do page caching um, either just uh, through the database like normal or paired up with varnish um, for those pages. And uh, as you'll see um, in the graph, uh, you get really significant um, uh, page speed decreases. Um, like I said, you can go from about 400 down to, you know, just over 100 milliseconds. Um, this is response time uh, to the server. So this is basically the PHP MySQL or, you know, whatever Redis, whatever you have paired up there that is running. Um, this is not necessarily the page load um, that's happening. Uh, so this is, it works with Commerce Core out of the box. Um, it actually has specific Commerce support built into it to handle carts and stuff like that. Um, it is adding like a whole different caching type layer. You have to turn off regular anonymous cache. You have to use auth cache. It works pretty well. Um, any customized stuff you have um, may give you difficulties. If you've put things in templates that you maybe shouldn't have put in templates, those will cache wrong. Um, if you set up blocks maybe the way you shouldn't have, um, those might not work right. Um, also, you're going to have to uh, possibly tweak your pages to make sure that they do uh, work with auth cache because if your page is flagged as unable to be cached, um, it's still not going to cache um, uh, even with auth cache. Like it doesn't, you don't just turn it on and it's a magic bullet. Um, so it actually has a debugging setup um, that you can turn on and you can hit any page um, and see if it's actually hitting the auth cache or not. Um, so what that is going to, and that's going to usually tell you why it's not hitting. Do you have a dynamic element on the page? Um, is there something that's causing it to not cache? So you can do things like if you have a couple of blocks, if you have a, like a cart block is going to be one, for example. Um, you can set that to load, uh, load through Ajax or through um, uh, edge side includes. Um, so you basically, uh, it's sort of a precursor to how, how Big Pipe works now in D8, but you can load those after the initial page load. So you can cache that initial page load, get the quick initial load. Um, and then get the load after that. Uh, you will get a little, you'll get better speed. You will get slightly more load on your server because you are bootstrapping uh, Drupal multiple times there. So, I mean, that's a standard project for, or problem for most Ajax loads. Um, there is also a JS module um, which will uh, reduce your um, overhead for Ajax requests um, for stuff like this. I haven't tested the two together. Um, I've got good results with Authcache and I've got good results with the JS module. I haven't run them together to see if they run smoothly or not. But um, just keep that in mind as well if you're trying to tweak for, perform for performance. Okay. Um, Redis. Um, and this is somewhat applies to Memcache too, although I wasn't able to do full benchmarks um, for Memcache as well before this. 
Um, Redis is not going to help you as much as you would hope, really. Um, you know, you go, okay, I have all these uh, dynamic things um, that I'm pulling from cache. I'm pulling form cache and field cache and, and all these other things that I can't do um, because I'm not using page cache. You know, so Redis is going to help me there. Um, that doesn't really uh, pan out in the benchmarks. Um, as you see here, uh, you get, um, in some instances, like where you can actually use full page caching, um, you get a small performance decrease um, uh, when you are using uh, stuff that can't be fully page cached and has lots of elements like a large catalog page um, or the cart page, you do get some improvement. Um, but that's going to be really variable. Um, that's going to vary a lot between your setup, um, what you're loading. Um, if you start to hit cache too heavily, um, it can sometimes be a little better on Redis. If you're hitting cache fairly lightly, it will actually be worse on Redis. Um, I would really try to benchmark that quite a bit. Um, on your setup, and I, and I will talk about uh, benchmarking tools later on, um, because it's not, everyone kind of gives this advice of, if it's in Dru uh, Drupal in general, they say, oh, just install Varnish and set up Redis and like all your performance problems go away. Um, that's not true in general, and that's definitely not true for commerce. Um, so be very cautious when you test uh, Redis, and what it can often be doing is if you add Redis, you will see a performance improvement, but it's because you're just, um, you're adding more resources. You've set up a new Redis server, you're adding that, um, and you're just offloading work off your database. You're not actually going faster uh, overall. Um, it's just that uh, you've split something up between two setups. So oftentimes it can be an initial problem uh, with your MySQL server, you just need more resources there, um, or you need, uh, you know, more, me you need to configure it to use more memory so it's, it's caching tables properly. Uh, MySQL will load up everything in memory as well. Um, so Redis is not, you know, you go, oh, it's key value store, it's in memory. You know, so f for some reason it's supposed to be way, way faster. Um, that's only going to help you uh, a limited amount. Um, so uh, proper tuning of your MySQL server, I would say, would be the first thing you do before you immediately just toss uh, Redis on there. Um, next one, uh, Varnish, like I mentioned. Um, this basically, if you ask anyone about Drupal uh, performance, before you've even finished asking your question, um, they're just gonna say Varnish, and they're gonna tell you that that's the answer uh, to everything. Um, it's like, oh, well, we just put a Varnish layer, and then Drupal super fast. Um, that's mostly pointless for commerce um, because, like I said, uh, so many things are dynamic. Um, so you're going to have so many cache misses um, on your varnish layer uh, that you're really not going to get the speed. Your home page is maybe going to load great, um, but after that, it's going to be very limited in the performance you're getting because you're, you're just you're going to miss this cache all the time. Um, if you do some of this stuff with auth, auth cache, um, like I talked about before, um, you will get a little bit better. Uh, you will get better performance because you'll be able to use varnish for some of these things. Um, and I would definitely say you can still use varnish, like I'm not saying don't use it. Um, just it's not going to be the sort of silver bullet that solves all your problems. Uh, okay, uh, order locking. So this is a specific problem that you can get uh, within commerce. So if you don't have any issues um, with order locking or specific pages or something, you don't necessarily have to worry about fixing this. Um, but how this works, and I'm gonna kinda have to go into some of the backstory here, is that um, commerce uh, has this sort of very basic uh, pessimistic order locking setup. And so what that means, uh, the difference between a pessimistic and optimistic order locking is pessimistic order locking, when you load something up, it says, I might edit this so d nobody else touch it. Um, because I might change something, and if you change something as well, then we'll get screwed up. Um, the problem is, is, is well, that prevents you from having any screw-ups. It also means no one else um, can work with that setup. And in the instance of Drupal Commerce, um, because it uses, uh, basically there's some very simple default sort of entity locking built into Drupal 7, um, and Commerce basically just took that and then used it probably a little more than it should have been used. Um, so you have, uh, any time you load up uh, an order, it is going to lock, it's gonna do basically a MySQL for update select. Um, and so that row is gonna be locked from anyone else loading it, um, any other selects on that, um, until uh, basically the whole page load finishes um, and, the, and the database connection is closed. 
Um, so sometimes that's fine. Most times people are just running one, you know, they're going through looking at their own order. Page loads happen pretty quickly, so most of the time spent looking at an order is actually looking at a static a screen and nothing's happening in the back end. Where this can cause real problems is if you do, uh, if you have order management screens that show lots of orders, if you have reports that load up orders, those are all for the duration in which they are loading going to lock any orders that they touch. Um, so that means none of your CSRs uh, can edit those orders. Um, anyone who's a customer, like if, if you're still doing these for in-card orders or something like that, those orders will not load, they will hang. Um, if you have concurrent uh, Ajax uh, stuff that runs in the background and things like that, um, uh, one of those can block the other and so you'll get maybe twice the load time that you actually need. Um, it's a bad way to do order locking, it shouldn't have really been done that way. Um, it just wasn't really thought through much, it basically used the standard droop away um, and then it, it just doesn't scale. And it, it does not immediately apparent, um, you have to have these sort of cases like I described or um, you have to specifically simulate it. Um, so uh, how to fix that, because that sucks, um, is uh, there's, a, there's a patch um, which I've linked to there, or there's a big thread with a number of patches in, um, which will limit the instances in which we order lock, because um, by default, commerce will order lock everything. Um, and so lots of stuff you know, if, like if I'm looking at a view of orders and, I'm not, and I can't edit on that screen, we don't need to lock any of those orders because I'm never going to change them. Um, so there, are some, there is a patch there that will um, make the pessimistic order locking a lot more specific. So it will only happen on like order edit pages, um, uh, cart load, specific things where you're likely going to be um, changing that order. Uh, but the second option is you can also just turn it off. Um, which is actually what we run on a lot of our sites. Um, because it only locks during uh, the load, it's a very limited benefit. It's not preventing two people from loading up the same order um, and then one person edits it and then the other person edits it. Um, that can still happen. Um, uh, that's the thing you have to sort of manage you know, with revisions and stuff like that to, to keep track of those edits. Um, so we just usually remove it because then we have no blocking issues. Um, and that can be a real problem um, for us. Like this can be one of your biggest performance things. You'll notice it in sort of weird, uh, strange spikes uh, in response time that you won't really be able to track down. Um, and the way uh, you can find that is if you have something like uh, New Relic or even Slow Query Log or anything like that um, from iSQL and you look in and you'll see four update queries um, tagged in as part of the stuff that is taking a really long time. And those are blocking, or like locking queries. Um, so those are what is your problem. And, and why you're getting those is because you're having an order locking problem. So um, you can always come and bug me if you need more info on that. I r wrote a bunch of the patches and the issue there and everything and I'm involved all throughout it, so. Um, next thing, database locking. So this is a standard uh, commerce problem, although it becomes particularly apparent in Drupal Commerce because Drupal Commerce is, uh, it uses a lot of fields and so it, it, it really sort of strains the, sort of the whole entity system. Um, orders will have many fields attached to them, products can oftentimes get very large. Um, you also have product variations that are attached to products and so you're loading tons of entities. So lots of um, effort or, and load is being put on the whole sort of entity caching layer, field caches and stuff like that. Um, and by default, uh, there's a basically different uh, isolation uh, methods um, that MySQL uses and by default um, it won't use read committed um, and it'll use a way that basically um, to sort of keep uh, for, for a little bit better insert speed, um, which for, for us in Drupal doesn't really matter, it will basically lock the rows around whatever it's editing. Um, so it will say, hey, I'm editing here and I sort of need to lock the IDs around there because I don't know if I'm gonna change this, maybe I'll remove this ID and then like things are gonna have to shuffle up or something. Um, so it locks these whole sections and so now you're doing, um, you know, you're loading products, you're doing other things and you're locking basically sort of strips in your database. Um, and if you need to load all these products, you need to load orders, stuff like this, um, you will get stuck in deadlocks. And it, these are ones where it won't actually go slow, it will get stuck and it won't work because it'll say, I'm trying to load this but you've locked it, it will time out and the whole page won't load. Um, this one thankfully is easy to fix and pretty easy to diagnose. You will see in your MySQL uh, logs and it will even uh, pop up in your Drupal watch, or bubble up into your Drupal watchdog. 
um, you will just see deadlock errors and you'll see that they'll all be on like the various field tables and they will just spam through your error logs. Um, the thing is, is you just have to tra change your um, transaction isolation to read committed, um, which is pretty simple. Uh, you can do it at the database level or you can throw a single line um, into your settings.php um, which will fix that. And like I said, you'll sacrifice ever so slightly much performance that you probably won't even be able to notice it on inserts and you will get, you will totally eliminate your locking problem. Um, and that can be, uh, this comes up quite common in Drupal sites. This is like a really standard thing we do. We basically put this in, in most of our sites by default. Um, uh, this work, uh, this uh, fix here and a bunch of other uh, cool performance stuff comes from the uh, a pretty darn quick cache module, um, which I've linked there because it's got a bit of a wordy uh, name and a confusing abbreviation. Um, it has a whole bunch more uh, database tweaks and tunes and stuff you can get. It's not commerce specific, it just does database stuff in general. Um, but uh, this is a specific, this is one of the sort of basic ones it does and so I just, um, if you want any more information for it, uh, you can go there. Um, commerce calculate price. So this, th I'm not gonna have as many solutions for this one too. Um, it is, uh, it's kind of just a bad way that, that commerce 1.x was architected. Um, every time we show a price in commerce, we have to calculate what that price is. And I mean every time we show a price. So if we show a, a whole list of pricing on a catalog page, um, if we show it on search results, um, even when we show a single price on a product page, we are always calculating that price. Um, and that's heavier than you think. Because um, we're calculating everything. We're saying, hey, you know, is there any reason we need to change this because of the user, because of their location, because of what the product is? Um, are there any discounts applied? Are there any sales active? Um, any pricing rule that is gonna run is gonna be run every time you load that product. So if you have a catalog page has 30 products, you have, you could have really easily 25 different pricing rules. Um, 25 different pricing rules are gonna run times 30. And that is gonna actually add a pretty significant time to it. So obviously try to cache those pages um, if you can. Um, and if you can't, um, try to at least be cautious of what you have in your pricing rules. We get a lot of sites where they can bloat up a lot. Um, so people will have, they'll have four years worth of discounts um, set up in there. They'll have a ton of tax rules they don't use. Um, they'll have way more, they'll have four or five times as many pricing rules as they need. Um, so just go through your list. You can even look at it directly through the rules UI. Um, just go through it and audit some of those out. You, you're not gonna get a crazy performance increase, you know, but maybe you save, you know, 20, 30, 50 milliseconds off your page load, which, which can be significant, um, depending on, on how messy uh, your rule setup is. Um, so uh, otherwise, unfortunately, um, there's not a lot to do with that. That is totally fixed and way better in Commerce uh, 2.x, um, which I will touch on later. So, um, you know, we didn't just keep doing the same stupid thing over and over again. Um, uh, regular stuff. Um, so this stuff isn't really commerce specific, but it's some standard performance stuff that tends to come up in commerce quite a bit. Um, first one, this is really simple. It seems like nothing. Uh, don't have any variable sets that run on anything that isn't like a one-off config page. Every time you run a variable set, you clear the entire variable cache and it has to be redone. And depending on your site, this might be like a two meg cache that is getting redone. Um, and so you can be redoing that every page load. Um, and th that will absolutely destroy your performance. You might have a simple thing where you're just trying to set like, um, oh, who's the last person that viewed this product or some sort of silly thing like that. It, it seems harmless, um, but it will, it will just destroy your performance. It will, it will completely, like it will turn your page from working to almost unloadable depending on the size um, of your variable cache because you, you it's a one thing that you cache all the variables. It's every variable for your entire Drupal site um, that is basically gonna be dumping in there, um, which is just, yeah, like I said, awful. It can be megabytes for even uh, particular, not particularly large uh, sites. Um, next, use all the normal stuff. Um, uh, page cache, block cache, you know, compressor JS, CS, like all that stuff that's in Drupal, make sure you have that turned on. Um, it sounds stupid, but lots of people will be missing that and it turns out, oh, we're not caching blocks, you know, right? And so you're loading menus, you're loading other things. You know, commerce, you might have huge menus that list hundreds of products in them and stuff. If you're not caching those, um, that's terrible. Uh, so make sure those are turned on and then maybe even check the blocks that you use a lot and make sure they actually are caching. Blocks may be set to not cache. 
Um, depending on what modules you have, you can turn that on manually. Um, it may come from modules that you've installed and they will have non-caching blocks. Um, and like a simple block you know, on the side of your page that does something seemingly minor will destroy most of your performance. Um, I touched on it a bit. Um, audit your rules. I was talking about pricing rules. Audit all the rules um, that you have on your site. Uh, rules fire all the time in Drupal Commerce. Most of it is based on rules. Um, and they can be doing really heavy stuff. They can be doing big, uh, heavy calculations. They can be doing lots of stuff. Or they can run all the time. There's lots of stuff that will run on add to cart, um, that it will run on order update, uh, things that happen all the time. So check what you have in there and make sure it actually needs to happen. Um, it's not either could just happen less often or it maybe is just old and doesn't need to happen at all or maybe you can do it in a different way. So, um, you know, you might not get a lot of performance from any one rule, but um, from a bunch, again, it can add up. Um, the next thing, uh, check for anything that is setting or screwing with cache. Um, you can get uh, really weird problems from small little modules and stuff like that, that you can have an otherwise performance site that has one small quirk and one contrib module that you've downloaded, and then it can destroy your performance. Um, I'm just going to go with a quick example uh, that we found when we were doing some performance testing. Um, we found that commerce uh, field group panes, which is a, a basically a really uh, simple group. It makes you take a, f it takes a field group that you set up for like a commerce order, and it turns it into a checkout pane. It's not a very big module. Um, it's very simple. It hasn't really had many updates because it does one thing, and it basically works fine, and that's it. Um, the problem was is it had a very small thing where um, when it loaded the field info, um, it passed a flag as false that should have been true. And what that meant is that flag said that all the field cache gets cleared. It said, I don't want to pull from cache, I want to pull fresh. Um, there was absolutely no reason for this module to do this. It was a simple mistake by the person who was writing it. They wrote the wrong thing in. But that resets your entire field cache on um, every page that loads a field group. Um, so any uh, checkout page ran, you would clear all the cache, not just for you, but for everyone, right? You're clearing the whole cache um, for fields. So if you have even one person going through your checkout, they are clearing the site for everyone. The more people you have going through the checkout, the more times you're clearing the cache. So you're getting, all, you get almost no benefit from caching. So there's little things like that um, that you have to watch out for. So if you see um, in your auditing that you have, you know, cache loads that are happening, um, they shouldn't, and, and cache sets and stuff, they should not happen very often. If you see those popping up a bunch, um, you probably have something wrong. And you're gonna have to drill down a little bit, unfortunately, to find out, um, you know, where those are and what problems they're causing. And usually this fix is actually really simple, but it might take you a while to, to arrive at, you know, where the actual problem was. You know, uh, Commerce Field Group Pains was not the first module I looked at. Um, it, it was probably about the last module I ended up looking at. Um, next thing, uh, tools and testing. So stuff that you can use to help you um, figure out uh, Drupal Commerce, so, and what the performance problems are. Uh, because it can be really, really difficult. You can just have a page that it's just slow, and why the hell is it slow? It, it shouldn't be slow. You know, it's, it's not doing anything complicated. It's loading one product, you know, it, it does nothing. Like, why does it suck? Um, uh, and so, some stuff you can use. Uh, New Relic um, and Blackfire are both really good if you haven't used them before. New Relic is, is like a pretty good monitoring tool. Um, it's mostly just like a regular Drupal stuff, XHProf, like running in the background, but it does it in a really nice UI. It gives you lots of things. It, it sort of will pick, you know, important results, things that are particularly going slow, group them together. Um, it's very helpful. Um, it does have a free version. I think it will only store your data for 24 hours or three days or something like that. Um, but uh, it can be really helpful. Like you can just turn it on, look, see what your couple of top performance things are, hit those, you know, see if you fix them, and you don't need weeks worth of data. If, if you're f trying to find more edge case stuff, you're, you're going to probably need to pay for that longer amount of data. But you can get a ton done um, with the free report. It has most of the features, it just doesn't store the data for a long time. So it's, uh, it's very useful and the, the free offering is quite robust. Um, Blackfire is similar, although it is more of a sort of test driven type of uh, approach. So um, it's sort of something where you can say, hey, you know, run these pages and stuff, and I expect like 
these performance results and if and it's going to basically generate you a report about that and you know why didn't you hit that what wasn't performant and stuff so uh, the actual data you're going to get from it is fairly similar but one sort of more of an active monitoring and one's like a, a testing and something you more run on you know devs and uh, um, staging and stuff um, the next thing uh, is you can just use xhprof uh, directly um, a lot of those other ones they're actually basically a layer over top of that and they do custom stuff and things like that um, but xhprof is going to show you um, what run, it's going to show you basically all the functions that run on a full page load for you. Um, and then it's going to show you how much time they all take. And so that's where you're going to drill down to find out what is causing a problem. Because you'll probably get something upper level, um, you know, hey, this, you know, load product function is, is going really slowly, right? But it's probably not load product itself that's slow. You're probably just going to have to drill down. Um, and you're going to find, okay, this goes in a half a millisecond, this goes in a tenth of a millisecond. This goes in 30 milliseconds, okay, why is that? And then you can pick those ones that are uh, specific that you think as educators, you kind of have to use your intuition a little and as you do it more you'll get better at it. Um, but you can usually pick ones that you know they're big and they, there's no reason they should be big or you'll, you'll see function names that seem innocuous um, but the time just doesn't match up and then you can uh, go into those um, and take a look. Um, okay. Uh, next thing is uh, the devel uh, query log that you can do. And so it can basically, um, you can turn it on for the devel module and down at the bottom of your page it will just show all the database queries that have to run um, and how long they took to run. Um, this can be just a really easy one to see if you have a, like a single query um, that is running bad uh, on a, um, a single, you know, you can just have one little one-off. There's an index missed somewhere in some in some custom thing you made in some contrib module. There's something that's causing uh, a bad uh, database thing. Um, it won't help if you have things. Or it won't help too much if you have something that's just running way too much. Um, it will kind of point that out, but it won't necessarily give you um, indexes where the problems. But slow stuff and things like that, um, it will flag that really easy. You'll also get it from uh, your slow query log, but this just gives you a breakdown of everything that was loading on the site. You might have a thing where like all these queries are running and why do they even run? They shouldn't run on this section and stuff. So um, I won't touch on that too much, but just if you haven't been using that, um, that's very good. Uh, the slow query log um, from MySQL, which you can turn on, is very similar, although um, it's only going to get slow queries. Um, it's not going to get queries that run way too often or queries that shouldn't run and things like that. You have to go in in more detail. There. Um, the next thing is uh, benchmarking tools. Um, JMeter. Uh, is amazing. It has tons of features. It's really good. Its UX is horrendously bad. Um, you won't be like. It will take a while to actually get it set up and to get it working. Um, and especially if you have to test with commerce, because you can't just do a page load. Um, that's the easy thing to test. That's not where most of your performance is going to be. You have to add things to cart. You have to go through the checkout. You have to uh, go through the cart. You have to do all these. Um, product uh, flow steps um, to actually simulate commerce. If, you're, if your first page loads, uh, well that doesn't matter, that has nothing to do uh, with 99% of your site. Um, so test with that. Um, specifically test with sessions as well. So make sure you set a session. In both JMeter and Apache Bench, um, you can set a session. Um, Apache Bench, it's a little lame. I'm talking too long on that slide. Um, so uh, uh, Apache Bench, you can actually log in, you can create a session, you can add things, it's going to track your session, it's going to go through. Um, Apache Bench is a little dumber. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go in your browser, you're going to have to do that stuff yourself, set up a cart or something, and then you can just copy the session cookie out of it and you can pass it through to Apache Bench. Um, but uh, Apache Bench is just really helpful for running really quick, small tests that you can just run from the command line, whereas JMeter is this big Java monstrosity. Um, uh, and if you're not testing with the session set, you're, you're sort of wasting your time, so. Um, and, you know, you can't test perfectly through your checkout flow, you know, oftentimes because you have real payment gateways and stuff there, but test as far as you can. Maybe turn on the example payment gateway on your dev environments and stuff like that and try to go through all the way to the thank you page. Um, we have problems where people will test like the, f the easy parts and they won't test that last part and then you'll have, um, you know, 20 second page loads, 15 second page loads on your checkout pages. Um, and that will cause people to drop and not use your checkout. Um, they will get part way through, it will be difficult, um, it will lag, it will confuse them, they will just give up. The, the <laughs> threshold people have for buying something and not buying something is super low. <laughs> um, people will buy on a whim um, and anything that gets in the way will really stop them. 
uh, from buying it. So you, you will actually get real significant cart drop off. Um, you can always check your analytics. You can look if you have a particular page that's problem, uh, problematic. And then that can sort of focus your uh, testing efforts to be like, okay, this page, I think the UX is okay, but people just bomb on that page. What's my performance like on that page? Um, okay, commerce uh, 2.x. Uh, so with, com first of all, a little bit of background on commerce 2.x. Commerce 2.x is the rewrite for uh, Drupal 8 of commerce. Um, it is not out yet. Um, uh, I think the last beta will release tomorrow, maybe today. Um, which will have sort of most of the functionality, and then uh, RC1 will be uh, right at the end of May, so probably right on May 31st. Um, so for just a little bit of backstory of that. Um, it is totally rewritten to be like Drupal 8, so to use, you know, Symfony components and to be all object-oriented, um, to work with Composer, to have all that uh, set up. I won't talk too much, but just to give you a bit of a background that it is like a, a full architectural rewrite. Um, which means we can use cool stuff, uh, performance stuff that comes with Drupal 8. Um, the first of which is we can use BigPipe, um, uh, which I, Dries talked about a little bit um, in his keynote, um, and I know has sort of gotten some decent press around the community lately. Um, that basically lets you do kind of what I described with auth cache, where you can edge load stuff, um, but it's totally built in, it's way better, um, and it uses uh, you know cache contexts and all the sort of cache um, info that we now have built into Drupal uh, core, where we can say, hey, it's not just the page or not the page, it's all these parts of the page that I can cache. And so you can load 90% of the page and then the dynamic bits pop in later. So we load, you can do like a, a really cool example. So you wanna have a catalog page, but you wanna show the user some customized products that are just important for them. So they're basically say, hey, you know, based on your previous purchase history or whatever, um, use these products or you know, view these products and they're probably recommended ones that you'll want. Um, but that's slower, that's dynamic for each uh, user. So that's the thing that we can't cache. But so what you can do is you can put maybe like, um, maybe you put you know, a top eight products and those are the same for everyone. So you can cache those, you load them up right away and then you um, sideload in the dynamic products below that. So the user still has something to look at, they're not waiting for a page load, um, but they, and so they get content, but then they also get their customized content. And so your perceived page load, even if your total page load is still low, your perceived page load can be much, much faster. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big pipe fanboy. I'm a big, big pipe fanboy. I, I won't say that again. Um, uh, uh, I've, I've spoken on it before. We've done videos on it and stuff like that. It's really cool and it's really good for commerce because it, it really addresses that whole problem of dynamic pages um, and what to do with it. Uh, I actually should have mentioned on here as well, um, although I kind of think of them as the same thing even though they're not really. Um, Drupal also has a lot of dynamic page caching uh, built into it for Drupal 8 um, to handle caching parts of pages and, and stuff that is dynamic but can still be cached. So that lets you you know, push it to varnish and still do things like that and do all that stuff that I talked about being such a big problem um, in 7. Uh, that isn't a problem in eight. And a lot of that is not gonna be your problem to config anymore because it's gonna come with commerce, it's gonna come with stuff built into Drupal, it's gonna be built into contrib modules. Um, when you're setting stuff up, you have to set all that cache info. Um, there'll probably be little tweaks and things like that where everyone gets this ironed out because it's, it's still pretty new, um, but it's gonna work so much nicer for dynamic content out of the box. Um, oh, kind of a mix of points up here, but yes, and that will let you push all that to Varnish um, as well. Um, the next thing, uh, we will have optimistic order locking, um, which is just generally a happier term, um, but also means that uh, we won't have any of those order locking uh, problems we talked about before. So it will have an optimistic uh, locking setup which says, um, we assume that we will never change the data and we can always load it. Um, so we always load the data all the time. Um, and then should we have somehow screwed up and we did edit it, um, and then now we're gonna work on it again. We just say, hey, I'm sorry, you know, we throw an exception, we say this has been changed, you know, you can't edit that more, you need to reload and try again. And so that can be handled sort of on those individual cases um, and we don't sacrifice performance for that because we assume and we just load things up fast and then we deal with them afterwards in the editing and the, the smaller one-off cases um, versus the, the big loads in advance. Um, okay, next, oops. Um, uh, commerce, like I talked about, uh, cal calculating uh, prices, uh, it uses something, it uses price adjustments now. And this actually has a full caching layer, um, which I think is done, uh, or almost done at least. Um, and so all these price calculations that happen, 
um, they don't have to happen all the time now. They only happen when we're actually doing something to the price. So when we load up products and we just want to display them, we're not recalculating uh, any of the pricing anymore. We are doing that only when we should, and so that saves us uh, a lot of speed. Price adjustments are also just awesome, and they're way easier to work with, and they're great for taxes and discounts and other things, but specifically for performance, um, they have a real uh, benefit there. Um, how are we? Okay, I will try to be pretty quick here, so we still have time for questions. Um, conditions instead of rules. Uh, Drupal Commerce uh, for Tutodex doesn't actually use rules anymore. Um, it just uses the conditions setup uh, that's now basically uh, built into Drupal Core. Um, and they are much more fine-grained, so we don't have these big overarching rules that have to fire all the time. We have specific conditions that are already tied to events. Um, so uh, discounts know exactly when to fire and when they need to be calculated. Taxes know exactly when they need to fire and be calculated. Um, conditional payment options only go exactly when they have to go. So um, it's both a nicer setup to use from a user uh, experience point, um, and it is a little lighter um, than the rules setup, which was, while very robust, a bit heavy. Um, uh, quick things to go through. HTTP2 has like a nice module to support pushing uh, CSS, JSS, or JS. There's only one S. Um, uh, to the browser a lot faster because um, oftentimes we have you know heavy stuff. We'll do that if we do builders and flows and stuff like that. So um, that's very good. You can get a decent performance increase there. Um, works nicely with Drupal 8. There's also a refreshless module. Um, which does this really cool like on-page loading where you don't load a whole new page and everything. Look at the demo, it's very slick. Um, it works great, it will hopefully be really cool for commerce. And sorry, I'm gonna talk really fast so we can get this in here. Um, uh, Web Profiler, which comes with the Devel module in Drupal 8, it will give you this awesome toolbar down, which I probably should have included a screenshot of in retrospect. Um, but uh, if you go to the Devel module, you can see it. It will uh, give you this really cool toolbar down at the bottom of any of your pages when you have it turned on, and it will show you tons of performance issue, or info. It will show you, you know, uh, whether the caching was hit or not, what caching was hit, um, what database calls were made, you know, what your uh, time to first byte was, um, what your page load time. It's just all this caching info at the bottom. It works really cool um, out of the box. It, it's, uh, been, it comes originally from Symfony, and then it's been edited to work with Drupal quite a bit. It is very good, and it will help your performance debugging a lot. Um, next thing, really quick to sort of tack this on here. Um, uh, we from Acromedia have uh, just started doing a free, uh, basically, SLA report uh, for commerce if you use it. Um, so we are going to, uh, we'll basically send out a report, um, which you can see on our website, and I've linked just a bit of a screenshot at the top here of, um, which says, like, here's all the security updates and here's all the various updates that have happened you know, in the Drupal ecosystem. Uh, here's what's you know, changed and you should update. You know, here's important security things. Here's not that important security things. Here's what you know, test coverage looks like for various things so you can try to you know, ascertain the robustness of various modules and performance tips and some other stuff like that. So there wasn't a lot of support for commerce in the community so we've been trying to do that. Um, you can sign up for that. If you want to sign up, you can always come by our booth. We'll scan you, sign you up in like two seconds. So. Um, it goes out monthly. Um, it's just a simple email. Um, we'll try not to spam you at all. Um, and then uh, we will do the 2.0 version of that uh, once 2.0 launches in about a month. So, and we have a number of modules we support now and we will continue adding more and more <laughs> modules there. Um, okay, there we go. The last little thank you things and then we will get on to questions. Um, just a few people uh, to thanks there. Um, uh, Boyan, uh, Torgo's Pizza, uh, who's Eric. Um, Josh Miller, uh, who works for us, and uh, Damien. Um, who just helped me with various parts of, you know, fixing performance things in commerce and learning about stuff that I talked about in this talk. Um, secondly, I have another session um, with the aforementioned Josh Miller um, on Thursday. We'll be talking all about feelings and lovey-dovey things and basically if you're like an inhuman emotionless monster like I am, um, you will, you know, be nice and talk to people and work with teams and, and do fun, happy stuff. Um, we are sprinting for commerce on Friday. Uh, so, uh, we will be, I will be there at least for the morning, I have to fly out in the afternoon, um, but we'll be trying to be doing sprinting um, all on Friday, we'll set up a commerce table, or tables, um, so come around and find us. Um, we're Canadian, so we got suckered into doing all the Canadian tax work, um, which apparently we have to finish on Friday, so we will try to do that. Um, if you want to come talk to us, talk about Drupal Commerce, there's a whole bunch of us around, we have these sweet Drupal Commerce t-shirts. Um, uh, you can find our booth. Um, it's pretty big. It says Drupal Commerce in huge letters on it. And you probably can't miss it. Um, and the last thing, if you have any Commerce Commit creds and you want a sweet, exclusive, very exclusive Commerce Committer t-shirt, 
um, come up and show us that you have like at least one commerce related commit cred on your D.O profile and we will give you an exclusive shirt. Um, I think, is that, there we go, last slide. Okay, we're done. Um, question time. Or applause, maybe? I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, uh, we'll maybe try to see if we can just shout out, and if not, we'll use the mic here. But I'll repeat the questions here, so. Okay, so uh, do you believe the Drupal is very similar to the, the Drupal Commerce indirect statement or not? So, so you can play around and build the, the things that are uh, exclusively to my account? Yes. Um, as, oh, sorry, the question was, um, is Drupal uh, Commerce 2.0 stable enough to uh, play around with and to start using? Um, yes, especially if you don't plan to launch your site immediately, um, then you're fine. We have a number of launch sites. There are probably half a dozen or more sites um, that have been launched already with it. Um, so it's definitely good for that. Um, it, just check a little bit what you need from the Contrib ecosystem and stuff like that, but we're actually pretty robust. We support over 20 payment gateways already now. Um, we have shipping, we have discounts, um, you know, we have all the sort of major stuff in it. So it is pretty robust um, already, but if you want to launch in two weeks, you know, that's no, maybe a little too fast, so, so yeah. Oh yeah, like it's, it's like I said, we're, we're on last beta like in a day or two, so um, it, you can definitely set up a full site, you can use it. Like we've launched production, there's like 10 production sites running on it right now, so okay. it's certainly robust enough. Uh, yep. Uh, how does this compete uh, with Magento? Um, uh, we actually do pretty well uh, performance-wise. Um, that's mostly because Magento is crap at performance, uh, <laughs> which at least this is Drupal content. Can you say that again? I can't hear you. Magento oh, sorry. <laughs> I said Magento is crap at performance. <laughs> now that's awkward that I had to repeat that, but. Um, <laughs> Um, in general or performance related? Whatever. <laughs> okay, well that could be like an entire talk um, on itself, but as a really quick summary, my like Magento versus Drupal Commerce uh, sales pitch, um, we're really flexible. Uh, Magento isn't very open source uh, anymore. They have this like really neglected community edition, um, and then they have their sort of really expensive uh, version now, um, and they don't really help uh, the community stuff anymore. They don't do that open source stuff. You kind of got to do what they want to do. Um, and we try to be fully flexible. We are open source. You can do whatever you want. Um, and so that's our biggest selling feature. I could go on for like hours on that, but that's a real brief cliff note version. Uh, yeah. Uh, as far as all the stuff I talked to is all D7 related, yeah. It's all about commerce on D7, yeah. And then I talked a bit about the stuff for um, performance for Drupal 8. I haven't run too many benchmarks um, for Drupal 8 performance yet. That probably won't happen about until we get to a 2.0 release. We've tried to keep a lot of the architecture in mind, but we haven't actually been running benchmarks and doing the last tweaks and stuff like that. So those are sort of theoretical examples we can do and stuff. I just wanted to say there is also a commerce session at 2.15, if anybody else is interested, that Ryan and Boyan are doing. Oh, right, yes, by the commerce guys, so Ryan uh, Srama, uh, Boyan uh, Zivanovic, um, who are like the original uh, creators of Drupal Commerce, and they will have a session um, this afternoon as well. So um, it's a shorter session, it's only one of the half an hour ones. Um, they're gonna try to go over some of the builds they've done in, in 2.0 and stuff, so that will be more specifically about 2.0 if you wanna uh, learn about that. Um, uh, there's uh, one way in the back there. Uh, yes, there are migration paths for, oh, yes, sorry. Um, are there migration paths for uh, uh, Ubercart um, to Drupal Commerce, uh, specifically Drupal Commerce 2.x? Um, yes, there are migration paths for both uh, Ubercart on Drupal 6 and Ubercart on Drupal 7. Um, they are pretty good. Uh, some people have already used them. They could still use a little fine tuning. Um, we actually just recently, as of last week, hired a, uh, or a migrate uh, core maintainer um, who's gonna be working full time on, for the next couple of months uh, finishing those up. Um, so they're pretty good now and they should be great uh, in a couple of months. Uh, uh, yes? Could you guys have a scenario where you have to do like an Etsy top of the e-commerce solution like multi, like multiple stores on, on, on a project? Uh, not as far as that we, oh, 
repeat the question. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm going to screw that up every time. Uh, Multi-store setup, uh, like an Etsy-style thing, um, and performance uh, regarding that. Um, smaller ones with two or three stores, um, not something with, you know, uh, thousands of stores or, or something like an Etsy-style would have. Um, 2.x has a really nice stores setup to handle that. Uh, commerce is a little bit, uh, it's only so-so at doing that. You are going to have uh, performance problems probably when you do that because it, it's not going to scale amazingly because you're still going to be, it, it treats all your products together and stuff like that unless you do like a completely separate multi-site setup. So um, it, it's not going to do amazing performance for that to be honest. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, so one dot X uh, supports um, some really simple multi-store stuff, like you can do like a multi-domain setup or something. Two dot X has full store support, so it has the complete concept of setting up multiple stores that have their own products, their own customers, their own everything. So, yeah, fully in two dot X, pretty minimal in one dot X. Any other questions? Good, good. Okay, doke. Thank you very much. Yes, which I think I have in my pocket. You said so when Square is coming out? Uh, so we should, we should release Candidate in about a month. Um, so end of May we'll release Candidate and then release soon after that. We won't do too much. We won't be stuck in like, like months of RCs or anything. That's going to be basically the final version. So it'll just be any bug fixes from that before we do an official uh, 2.0. So a, couple, a month, a couple of months yeah. after that. How this compare to the Kickstarter? Like functionality-wise? Or? Yeah. Yes.